Now, I want to f focus on the comparison between uh, spinners and the complex numbers. The complex numbers, you know, it took mathematicians several hundred years to really feel they understood what i was. i, the square root of minus one, was called an imaginary number. It did not exist, but by finding it very useful, they used it in formulas, and gradually, step by step, it became accepted. And finally, the formal definitions were given. So i became, the square root of minus one became an accepted part of mathematics, but it took a long, long time. Um, now, I want to suggest that the spinners are analogously a square root, but they are the square root of geometry. Now, think about that. Um, in geometry, the fundamental elements in geometry are undoubtedly to do with measurement, lengths, lengths, areas, volumes, and those are described mathematically by the exterior algebra, introduced by Elie Cantin into differential geometry as a fundamental tool to describe integrals. So that we understand very well. So what is the square root? Because why do I say it's the square root? Because you remember that the tensor product of the spinners with themselves is the exterior algebra. So the spinners are, in some sense, the square root, not of one form of a given degree, but some of them all. So it's, it's, it's a very deep notion, and it'll take us probably at least as long as it took to understand the square root of minus one to understand what spinners are, and they've only been around for perhaps 100 years, so we are still in the very early days of the equivalent perhaps of the 15th century in terms of mathematics. And so I don't know the answer to my question, and not, neither does Jean-Pierre here. And I say maybe Dirac knows, but he's up there with God. So <coughs> we are left on our own. And now, the, if you have a complex manifold, if the manifold you're studying is complex, then it's well known from the work of Hodge and so on, that the differential forms on the manifold can be broken up into the forms of type PQ, where P involves the dZs and Q involves the dZ bars, the mixture of the two, product, tensor product. So when you have a complex structure, you see the square root, and the square root is complex geometry. So when you have complex geometry, you found a square root inside the real geometry. A complex structure has given you a square root. But spinners exist without the need of complex structure. So what is a spinner when there is no complex structure? So that's really the question. And complex numbers are, of course, not important, only uh, algebra. They're important to geometry, and it was known uh, um, of course, early on, that you could do, well, the theory of Riemann surfaces was fundamentally developed by, uh, um, formalized by, by Hermann Weyl himself. And so the important thing in, in, in the complex numbers is the analysis. The algebra, the square, square root of minus one, is interesting. We know that the complex numbers and the algebraic closure of the real numbers, it's, you don't need to keep going higher and higher up, just two equations of degree two. But the really deep part about complex numbers is their role in analysis. Complex analysis, Cauchy's theorem, and all that. That's a very sort of unexpected bonus. When people started to use II in formulas, it was thinking only in terms of solving polynomial equations. But then, in the hands of the analysts, Cauchy and others, it became an indispensable tool. So that's where the deep part of complex analysis is. And similarly, you expect the deep part of spinners not to lie in the formal properties of representation theory, algebra, but in their geometrical meaning. Because the question is, what is the ge and ge geometry here? I identify like Jean Pierre with analysis. You know, you, you jo do geometry on curved spaces. You you have to use analysis, differential equations. So we have to, spinner analysis has to be found as a substitute for complex analysis. That's the first stage, going from Cauchy's theorem in this idea of the square root of geometry.